when God calls a man the next thing he does is not to reveal to you where you are going he reveals himself first are we together now it is dangerous to come to God and then leave God and start following and pursuing purpose notice the pattern that he gave the apostles who would later become the initial leaders of the church he called all of them from their various you know vocations and he said follow me and I will make you that following took three years their lives seemed wrecked and frustrated to a point where they had to open up and say, listen, we have to confront you on this. We have left everything to follow you. What is a need for us? Because this, your training does not make sense to us. We were successful people before you called us. Right now, we've left fishing. We've left everything. Remember when Jesus died, they were angry because they felt scammed. And in John 21, Peter said, I go out fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing. The disciples said, we go back with you. When he met Jesus Christ, that was why when he saw that it was Jesus Christ, he said, go away from me, I'm a sinner. I've done something. I didn't know you would come back for me. I didn't know there was value in seeking and knowing you. Listen, the reason why God insists that we have an experience with him before he lifts us, huh, is because for every dimension of glory and influence, please listen, there are battles there are dynamics of living in every realm of leadership and growth that if you do not have a rich experience with God, you will not last. Hallelujah. There are certain enemies that you have no business knowing about until you attain certain heights in life. So before you get there, God prepares you. Do you know? It is because of this inability to be properly prepared that God himself impedes the growth of certain people. It's not the devil stopping the growth of certain people. God, by his mercy, he vets you and looks at your spiritual energy and capacity and says, no, I cannot give you this kind of membership. I cannot give you this kind of influence because I love you too much to expose you to a realm where you do not have the stamina to stand and remain. Hear me, please. If you are Elijah, make sure you know God enough to not allow the pride of Jezebel intimidate you. Because for every mantle of Elijah, there is the challenge of Jezebel looking for you. If you are Samson, make sure you have the strength to resist Delilah before. Don't wait until you become a champion because Delilah only looks for Samson. Delilah does not look for Joseph. Mm -mm. So, there are demons assigned to mantles, not people. Listen, listen, listen. There are spirits that have no, they don't want to know your name. They just look for whoever is carrying this mantle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are spirits assigned over Enugu State. There is a level of wealth that if you ever attain it, you activate the operation of those spirits. They don't look for you because of you. They don't care who you are. They only care for whoever. Because anybody that attains that level of influence, the realm of the spirit knows the impact you can have as far as God's purposes are concerned. You're a music artist. There are spirits that are sent to derail people at several levels. So you may see someone fighting a battle and say, oh dear, these people are not serious. It's because you've not risen. You don't know the one assigned. You have not picked your mantle and you are not walking. That is why. That's why many times, please hear me. When you find out that you are praying and you are loving God, yet some doors are not opening. Stop binding and casting. Ask, Lord, what are you doing? What level of equipping do I need to go through? Becoming great and becoming successful is the easiest part of success. Maintaining it and staying there. The ability to retain your honor. Please listen carefully. I hope God is blessing you already. Oh God, I pray that you grant me the whole world must hear my voice I can't be quiet Lord you you took me from a family with nobody in the name of Jesus Christ everybody must hear my voice <sighs> all right good prayer then there is a scan over your spiritual life in the realm of the spirit and it's like a shrub 
trying to carry mango fruits you know a shrub and yet the kind of fruit it wants to carry is mango the the fruit alone is what will kill the shrub god give me global visibility and yet you were crying simply because somebody told you you were stupid <laughs> Lord, my business must be number one in Enugu. Are you ready for the attacks and the antagonism that comes with influence? Are you prepared for it? I hope you are learning. Go and read about people in the Bible. That's why God gave us a Bible. Let me take a few for you and then you will learn. The Bible talks about a young man called Joseph innocent young man this gentleman goes to bed and then he has a dream in the dream you know um, he sees the Sun moon and the 11 stars bowing to him he gets up innocently maybe a morning devotion I can imagine the father is there the mother and the brothers remember they were not friends they were brothers say brothers and then he shares his dream daddy I have something to say I slept and I saw the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowing to me. The brothers did not seem to react there immediately. But something was about to come that the gentleman was not prepared for. Then the father now out of love for him gives him a coat of many colors. And the brother said, we've had enough. Can you imagine for brothers to come together and plan over their brother, not an enemy, and say, you know what? We are going to kill this person. And they threw him in a well and carried the coat spilled it with blood and went to tell the father that a wild beast had killed him imagine that kind of thing imagine Daniel it's in your Bible ladies and gentlemen that on account of the excelling of Daniel as a politician some people came together and said listen we need to do something about this man and the Bible says this as far as his duties are concerned they did not know anything what a man and they said what what where, what area are we going to trap him in? and they found out his covenant of prayer they said fine we will angle it through politics you would think they were just political people determined to make sure that babylon were a safe place they literally changed the policy in the parliament because they were looking for one man finally they get him and then even though the king liked him he had to submit to the principles the laws of the land they threw him in a lion's den do you know please look up i'm not sure daniel's daniel's first prayer would be for safety from the lions his first prayer will be avoidance of that effect that thing are we together that means he's going to say lord show up so that i don't even get to the lion's den in the first place I can imagine him saying my god you are faithful i will not see the lion no way i confess positively me and the lions i have no covenant with them i'm a man of prayer and the more he's praying the more he's getting to the den i can imagine what happened when they threw him there what happens when your prayer keeps moving you towards what you are praying against it's in your bible there are times that your prayer does not move you away from what you are praying for <laughs> or praying against it moves you towards this man was a man of prayer the bible tells us that there was no fault in him so you can't say he was suffering the consequence of anything and yet his prayer life kept leading him until finally he got there but that was a price that was needed for his exaltation so be careful sometimes what you are asking for is not answered not because god didn't hear he knew that you are not number one you are not serious and number two you are not even in a position sincerely it will be wickedness for god to make that prayer come to pass because you are clearly not prepared for it do you know what it meant for jesus christ himself to start renegotiating salvation i love the bible it does not hide anything jesus your jesus says father if it be thy will 
you thought because he was the word incarnate he would be so invincible against trouble no Jesus's vulnerability was clearly recorded in the Bible he said listen can't we negotiate this more do I have to die let me remind you my father that you are still God there is still another way but he just remember now this is the way of the spiritual man nevertheless not my will but yours be done listen you would think after talking nicely to God like that he will say look you just touched me okay you will not die he still died he still <laughs> you asked me to talk to leaders listen more than it does not cost God anything this I have learned from scripture and learned from my life believe me when I tell you it does not cost God anything to give you all the things you are praying for but you see the all-seeing eye of God sees both the results you are getting and the trouble the effects you are in the world of men this is what you need to understand the Bible says the highest heavens belong to the Lord but the earth has he given to the children of men that means all the things that plague men including jealousy including envy bitter envy even unto death still resides within your domain that is why when God wants to raise you to be a great leader the first thing he gives you is not the grace and the mantle for purpose the first thing he gives you is the gift of himself you must have a deep enough experience with God so there are times that you will see God training a businessman as if he's going to become an apostle and the man is saying God but it's his business now you are saying it's just my own is just money and God says you better fast you better fast because it's not about buying and selling you are going to be confronting spirit you will need that prophetic grace to know when to negotiate which business everything even darkness from afar looks like light see an experience with God many leaders are more focused about the technical skills of leadership many leaders are more focused on the value that they provide and there's nothing wrong with that many leaders are more focused on their influence and the loyalty of the people they lead but in order of priority for you to be an effective leader in ministry in business and to have any kind of sustainable kingdom influence that lasts please hear me the first port of call is your experience with god do you know god enough do you know how he delivers from trouble don't learn it when you are in trouble learn it before the things that are written at four time your bible says they are written for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope i don't wait until the day i get into trouble and i say god how did you even say we come out of trouble no no way before you get there you begin to learn the dynamics in your knowledge of god i will call upon the lord who is deserving or worthy of praise he says so shall i be saved from my enemies that means i gather this as arsenals as i am rising i expect some things to happen if someone looks at you and says you came to this office four years and they have made you an executive director over my dead body you don't go around and start panicking it's a proof of lack of thorough training if you learned and you were built by god you should already expect that this would happen and you should already have the plan to deal with it are we together there are people who had a greater sense of peace being poor than they were when they had money nobody disturbed you nobody lied to you nobody did anything and then you're praying and say father before the end of 2022 i must have my first hundred million i must have my first one billion and as you are saying it i'm sure the angels are just watching and saying goodness do you really what know what it takes to sit down on hundred million one billion of your money and be in christ listen again in your mind to everything i said and be because you see 
for a 1 billion naira holder let's use naira 1 billion naira holder there are certain relationships you must maintain that are not godly did you hear what i said there are certain relationships you must maintain at that level of influence that are not godly you have to master the dynamics of living as a sheep among wolves there are there are there are <laughs> hear me let me tell you this even as a man of god rising in influence you will be amazed at the proposals that will come around the world i submit to you i'm talking to leaders you cannot imagine the groups and the associations and the proposals that people have brought apostle there is this committee of so 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 across africa there is this one they are a group of global this and that and that and with all sense of joy i'm not stupid i'm intelligent enough to know what is demonic you cannot imagine the things i have rejected in my life as a price for remaining true with god now this is not the part of many people's stories that you will hear you just know that they are working with god and god is lifting them let me tell you there are times in your rising where loving god looks like foolishness because the amount of things you will lose you will need to check and say what else do i have what else do i have left something more than gold i've got something more than gold something more than gold i've got something more than gold if all i have is jesus i've got something more than gold i will tell it to the world see one of the deception of greatness is the presence of many material things material things have such jealousy they will fight your loyalty for god let that car arrive and you will see how much your heart was connected to it the moment the tire busts you can't even pray until they fix the tire the tire of that car remember you rolled around when you were just taking a cab and say lord everything to you by the time you build a business and you hear that the stocks of your company are about to crash and god says go and fast for five days you will lie down and say lord so is this how my company is going to go down that is the reason why god tells you to eat for the journey is far when he's subjecting you to fasting and prayer listen you don't know what it means to train six children or five children you may not have the time to fast for 21 days again so before the marriage comes he makes you to fast as if and you don't god what are you doing to me you are building stamina and energy for the days that are coming god by this teaching this morning is giving someone a definition as to what has been happening to you god i'm not seeing any result but you will say fast just when i'm done you give me two weeks break you say start another one why is that so because you will be so busy you will be so busy there are you will have to lean on your the 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 the, the prayer bank that you have built for years the word bank you have built for years hear what the spirit of god is telling you you're not listening to a lecture yes sir mm. there are some of you because of the kind of wealth that god is going to be committing to you the nature of your training will almost frustrate you you will find out that you are wealthy you are earning a salary of two hundred thousand, and god can say so everything you know why because compared to what is coming in the future what you are saving is nonsense god is using what you have to keep training you lord why what is this now you told me to sow two hundred thousand, and then my arrears just came you are saying so it again it does not make sense it will make sense when a billion dollars come that training will make sense when you become a captain over conglomerate and 
God will say so for this mission field. You have been trained already. Listen down. God is training you to be a prophet and in the process of knowing him, he will allow you to make certain mistakes deliberately. You will stand in the midst of people and say, who is John here? And there is nobody who is John. And truly, you believe that you had that name, John. It will sting your ego so that pride will die. The day that prophetic grace begins to work, you are no longer conscious of your reputation. Your awareness of obedience is greater than your validation. Can I tell you the truth? Treasure your scars. They will be the anchors for your remaining in the future. Treasure your scars. When we get to heaven today, there is only one person who has the scar that is branded that calls him the Christ. You will not know Jesus just by the crown on his head. Look at the hands of everybody and their feet. There is only one who has that unique scar. Your scar can give you a place in destiny. What you are ashamed of today will become your crown tomorrow. Yes, sir. I hope God is speaking to someone tonight. Listen. Most times when people come to me, <laughs> you know, I love people and when they come sincerely, the first thing they want to do is to receive anointing. And they kneel down and say, I ask them, what do you want? Some of you, four times. The four uh, now that's that's how many portion now double portion is two double double portion now that's quadruple portion four and i look at them with love and compassion and mercy is this how you want to destroy yourself double portion elisha asked for double portion he did not know what he asked for look at how he died elijah did not die oh. elijah went to heaven but the one who asked for double portion did not master the law of life. Look at how he died. Sickness kept following him because it was dominion over death that took Elijah to heaven. And Elijah asked for double portion. He did not know the attack that was looking for him. He died of sickness. The Bible tells us what killed him. So... For those who have been crying for three times the anointing of Elijah, show me the books you are reading. Show me the experience you are having with God. I want to walk in the healing anointing. Go and read about healing evangelists. Most of them did not live more than 80 years. Are we together? Because you see, the core area of your anointing is where Satan attacks people. He sends spirits to make you a victim of your call. This is how Satan works. If your call is unto healing and the rest, you must master living in health and the administration of the life of God. If your call is to bring people towards holiness and righteousness, you must master the art of circumventing Delilah. There are people who follow certain anointings, spirits, Is God giving us intelligence? Listen, let me tell you, by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of being with many fathers of faith in this nation. And when I have the privilege of talking with them, more than the things they are saying, I am observing. Observing. I can tell you that they have such a deep experience with God. Deeper than most people know. What we do on stage only accounts for 30% of ministry. I hope you know that. A major part of your life must be behind the veil. That is what strengthens what you do in the presence of people here. I've had the honor of meeting very wealthy people, multi-millionaires in all kinds of currencies. And when I sit with them, especially some of them who are very, very wealthy and love God, my goodness the level of consecration some of the rules that god had to create in their own lives you would think god were too strict but that's exactly what kept them and is still keeping them when you begin to walk with god when you learn doctrine and you rise to a particular
that point listen to me let me tell you what god begins to do god will begin to introduce unique rules based on the vulnerabilities he sees in your life if he studies you and finds out that look it looks like you your weakness is women for instance god is going to put a unique rule in your life that applies to only you in a way that if somebody looks at you he will say god, but god this is unfair god knows what he's stopping and once you walk with that mold you will find out that you will circumvent that weakness and you'll be able to be great there are others your weakness you are a man of god even if a lady walks naked in front of you it does not affect you but if you see an envelope even if you are passing and you see an envelope on the ground you must pick it and check what is inside watch this i know you are laughing but pay attention are we together are we together so god knows when the devil wants to destroy you he can bring enemies in the name of members for only one year who are millionaires but carry within them the spirit of your destruction if you have not gone through the school of the spirit that has purged you and broken you to a point where you lose an appetite for those things so god can give you rules like you will not have more than four cars at any point in your life your wife will say what kind of a husband are you they gave us 10 cars you gave away six why and you say i have a covenant with god god told me i will at any given point i will only have four cars it is not a doctrine it is a training god has vetted you in the spirit and have found out that if you have more than that that is that is the gauge of your discipline if it crosses that it can do something to you is someone learning there are people no matter how they fast and pray they will not be able to pack a stadium to talk to the people the reason is because what will happen to you after that meeting because of your low level of prayer your low level of consecration god will have to respect the allowance you have given him in your life he will not expose you to battles that are beyond your level of spiritual preparation Is this making sense to you so the higher you want to rise that's what i'm trying to say you must have a deep and a rich experience with god there are levels when you get to with god it no longer becomes an emotional dealing it is a covenant there are certain things when you do with god god will bring a sworn blessing upon you because you have gone this far i swear by my name that in any good state you will never beg for bread again to your children's children you see when you see people come with certain transgenerational blessings they didn't come just by dancing around and say god sent <clears throat> it was an experience with god